Robin Hood Radio presents Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willems. Michelle is a longtime journalist and herself is a published playwright of several theatrical works. She's a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post, Daily Beast, and the Atlantic websites. Another hope of another show. So I remain in Los Angeles and just saw my third play out here. Yes, L.A. has turned into an interesting and pretty active stage community. The first show I reported on, you might recall, was called King James. That was at the Mark Taper form, that King being the NBA star LeBron and his impact on two young fans. Well, the one that just opened at the Geffen Playhouse is called King Liz. And believe it or not, it deals with a young LeBron type, albeit with a checkered past, though primarily it's about a sports agent named Liz. I happen to be a sports fan. So I'm familiar with all the names thrown out here from Kobe to Kyrie. I'm not sure the average non-sports going audience member will get all the references, but this play written by Fernanda Koppel goes beyond that. It has six terrific actors, three men, three women. Sabrina Sloan is Liz. It's one of the best stage performances I've seen all year. And the play is ultimately about power, feminism, personal choices women have to make to be tough in business. Leadership, you gotta come from a place of yes, Liz says, and more. The profanity is rampant, but the themes resonate about competition among agents and especially among young athletes. Truth is extinct extinct in this business. His knees are a ticking time bomb, or a few sentiments I recall. It's a compelling two hour production. Last week, you may recall, I talked about the beautiful theater of war production about Ukraine, and I practically begged the company to record and make that one available. They rarely if ever do so. But happily, I received a recording and a link, which I quickly sent out to folks. So you should check that out. Try theater of war, the suppliants, and see what happens. Meanwhile, the company is already offering the next one for July 27th. That's a week from tonight. It's the women of Trachis, as always, 45 minutes of the actual playwright, this time that being Sophocles, performed by actors, including Elizabeth Marvel this time. And then a discussion with nurses, healthcare workers of today, getting their responses as to the relevance of words spoken and performed originally thousands of years ago. Now, in New York, shows continue to close. POTUS, I see, is the latest, coming to an end. You should go to Today Tix, T-I-X, and you can find that, that list and grab very inexpensive seats for them all. Meanwhile, a new production, rare in the summer, has opened, that being The Kite Runner, based, of course, on the hugely popular book. It's been treated politely but rather poorly by The New York Times and others. Though I have spoken to friends who, while they did not rave, they did be, found it, find it worth seeing. It has a limited run through October, so we'll see if that meets the test. And here again, by the way, culture is doing good things. Lobby signage and program inserts for the Kite Runner feature the nonprofit uh, organizations the show is partnering with. In its words, quote, supporting refugees, providing humanitarian relief, and building a better future for communities across the globe. Well, good for them. Now, as for streaming from home, you can always check out the 92nd Street Y site to sign up for multiple things, from lectures to classes to various entertainments. For example, this Thursday, July 28th, you can get some laughs with one called Jewish Musical Satire. It looks at how pop music often reflects Jewish values. The highly successful Los Angeles comedy writer David Mish will take you through tunes ranging from Rodgers and Hammerstein to Carol King. Now, finally, a few words about Ethan Hawke's six-part documentary called The Last Movie Stars. This is the one about Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. It's getting a lot of attention. Yes, they were legends of the screen, but they were closely connected to the stage. As the doc shows, they met as understudies on Broadway and married five years later. They were active and serious members of the method style of performance taught primarily primarily to them by Aaliyah Kazan at the Actors Studio. I'm sure the series, as it moves along weekly, will discuss their continued support of theater, even while going to Hollywood and winning Oscars and Emmys. Joanne was artistic director at the Westport Theater for a while, and Paul returned to Broadway as a stage manager in our town. 
In fact, the first time I went to New York as a youngster, we saw Streisand as Fanny Bryce, Carol Channing as Dolly, and Richard Burton as Hamlet. Our fourth show was a mediocre one called Baby Want to Kiss, but people lined up for it and filled the street afterward to see its stars. Yep, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward drive off into the night. The doc's director, Ethan Hawke's style, is initially kind of all over the place. It's it's about then, it's about now, it has contemporary actors reading the words of those no longer with us. George Clooney does Newman, Laura Linney is Joanne. But my sense is that it will all end up uh, making sense in the end. This is worth watching and remembering two amazing people who never stopped giving, by the way, in so many ways. Newman, of course, has passed and Woodward has been suffering for Alzheimer's for years. But in the end, Jill, we are reminded where our finest stars learn their craft. And craft it is. Do, do we have anybody in the, in the craft business right now? That's a good question. You mean studying acting? <laughs> well, I'm sure they're studying acting, but the whole, I, I mean, the whole notion of craft. Think, th- think about, when I say the word craft, you think, okay, obviously, Woodward, Newman. Who else do you think of? Well, believe it or not, I think of Ethan Hawke, <laughs> the guy who's made this documentary. This is a man who does the stage. He's done tons of stuff on stage. And apparently uh, Woodward and Newman were very generous to him. And he was generous to them over the years. Um, and he's written novels. Uh, so and he, so I do consider him a guy who's really learned the craft of stage and acting, which is why he was obviously drawn to this. I mean, acting classes are as filled as could be. Um, and that's people who I don't think, even out here in L.A., I've become very friendly with the guy who teaches acting five nights a week. He also performs in a local theater. Yeah, they do they all want to be on TV? Of course. Do they all want to be in the movies? Of course. But, you know, they're filling the stages. So um, I think we still have craft. I certainly hope so. There's certainly a lot to watch. What do you think out there? You must. There's a lot of craft out in that no, there's, area. There's there's a ton of craft out here. I, I'm uh, huh. I was I, I was basically thinking about, um, you know, stage versus screen, yeah. and by screen I am including everything else, because you know, it's very interesting. And they're different. And they're different crafts. They are different crafts. Newman and Woodward mastered both. A lot of people have. Al Pacino has. Dustin Hoffman. I mean, the list is endless. But you know. Other people have not. Uh, Julia Roberts, Julianne Moore would probably be the first to tell you that they are stars of the big screen. And they tried. They tried on Broadway. And it didn't work. And they really did not return. Um, And they learned to appreciate. I still remember when Julia Roberts gave out the Tony that year. And she said something. when She said, I have really learned this year what you people do. Uh, and that was she was referring to the craft that they have that movie stars really don't. I mean, it's one thing when they start on stage as Newman and Woodward did. It's another to reverse the other way. Now, Brian Cranston obviously has done it, a uh, big TV star who's been great on stage. But my guess is he started on the stage, you know, before before Breaking Bad, before we knew who he was. So I think they know that they're different crafts. Uh, listen, you know. People who do animation, that's a different craft. So I don't know. But uh, you certainly have a lot of stage out where you are, and you're very, very lucky. And like I said, L.A. is becoming much more serious about uh, its stage work than I than I ever remember. I grew up here, and there were two theaters at the time my, my entire childhood. And to what do you ascribe uh, its uh, interest? Is that, out here? Do, yeah. Do, do people... Uh... Is it, uh, is it because there's pe- not big, yeah, there's not a big theater going audience out here. I, I don't want to overstate this. There is when there's a big Broadway show that comes to town, like the Lehman trilogy, Hamilton. You know, when the when the stuff comes to town, they go support it. Hades Towns had a very good run out here. Yes, they do, uh, and they have many little theaters out here. You know, it'd be like an off Broadway off Broadway houses. I'm gonna go see one in a few weeks. Um, Two, I'm going to see actually the fountain next week, and then I'm going to one at the skylight. So there's plenty to see. You know, there's they have funny issues here like traffic, and that's a big issue. If you live in Santa Monica and you got to get to Hollywood, that's a schlep. 
And out here, that bothers people. Uh, New York, you know, you get on a subway and you're there. Um, so uh, it's a challenge out here, but I would say it's become much more appreciative of the, of the theater world than, than it ever has been that I can remember. Stage Right or Not with Michelle Willens, produced in the studios of Robin Hood Radio, robinhoodradio.com.